Right, so we've got our transformation rules, uh, six of them really. Shall we just pop them down over here? And uh, we've got the function x plus or minus a rule. We've got the function x plus or minus a rule. We've got the minus function x, the function minus x, and also the function kx. So actually seven there if we count, uh, yeah, seven rules then. And we're now going to look at the sort of question that you get in the exam. Now, they may be related to uh, an actual equation. They often are related to just um, a function that is made up of bits. In this case, it's a series of straight lines comprising a trapezium, but it's still a perfectly good function because if you give me an x value, I can tell you the y value, and clearly this particular function is only defined between negative one and between and four. Now I'm going to attempt, I should probably get in a bit of a mess with this, I'm going to try and put as many on this same diagram as I can, um, but we may have to, to, to redraw, redraw this one. Usually, again in the exam, you'll be asked to draw the um, transform function on top of the other one. So the first one then, nice and easy, function x plus 1, that's a translation, it's one of these. Remember it doesn't go the way you want it to go, it goes back 1. So therefore the whole thing, this is naught, will go back to there. Let's do it just sort of dotted for a minute. 2 will go back to there, 4 will go back to 3, so this line comes across there and that stays like that. So the whole function then moves back 1. Number 2, 2 times the function of x, that's our stretch. A stretch, uh, oh in fact I haven't written it down over there have I, so there is another one to, let's pop it down, k function x, you might have spotted that when I did the list. So a number in front is a stretch like this. There's nothing below the x-axis so it's all being pulled up by a scale factor of 2. Now remember the concept of invariant lines. So the x-axis goes nowhere. So this goes nowhere, this goes nowhere. Along here, my y-value is 2. Times that by 2, it's going to go up. Let's make that a bit higher. It's going to go up to 4. So all of that bit moves up to there. Everything else is taken up proportionately, giving me a graph that looks like that. Okay, so that's this one. Number three. Now, let's go back to the yellow. Now this one, remember, this is the tricky one. This is a stretch by one over k. So a stretch by a factor of a half parallel to the x-axis. So everything comes in. Nothing happens in the y direction, everything comes in. So this point here comes in to there. This point goes to there. So that line goes like that. This point comes to here, and so the final graph is like that. Okay, now I'm in trouble, aren't I? I've got, <laughs> got quite a lot of lines on there, so we'll have to, I think, well, we, let's just try 
drawing the answer only and see if we can get away with that. Function negative x, one of these. Remember what that was, it was reflection in the y-axis. Now when you've got things that are both sides of the y-axis to start with, then they swap over. So that this goes across to minus 4, this goes across to 1. 2 goes across to minus 2, and then the whole graph is the mirror image in the y-axis. So therefore, most of it's this side instead of the other. So there can you begin to see then how these rules are put into practice with, with this type of question. Not too difficult, just remember very clearly what each one does and then apply the rules step by step. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.